Welcome to Podcasting and Platforms. My name is Chris Spangle. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And we're talking about DAWs, Digital Audio Workstations. This is another episode in our Q&A series. Kai McGinnis wrote in on my LinkedIn page on Podcasting and Platforms LinkedIn page, excuse me, and asked what DAWs, let's read his question exactly. It was cost-effective, low-knowledge barrier to entry DAWs for multi-tracking. Now, what is a DAW, a DAW, a digital audio workstation? To put it simply, it's how you record the audio on a computer. This ranges from Audacity, which is a free digital audio workstation that you can record audio to your computer with, to a mid-tier option like Adobe Audition, or Hindenburg, or other recording platforms. GarageBand would technically be a digital audio workstation, all the way up to music recording studios. Like I visit one music recording studio and they have a box, a rack mounted box that is technically a digital, that's just a computer dedicated to recording. So there's a couple things to think about here. Kai, I'm wondering if he means a digital audio Recording and multi-track. What does that mean? Okay. Let me actually just show you. I'll pop on my Adobe Audition, which is my preferred digital audio workstation. I pay the $50 a month fee for the entire Adobe Audition suite. I highly recommend it. And this is what Adobe Audition looks like. Let me just hop back. So you see a bunch of different modules. So let me import a piece of audio. This is something from the pat down, pop it in here. This is the complete file. This is a single audio file. You see the waveforms. These are the tones of our voices. Multitrack is a little bit different, okay? This is how I created this. So when I had my original file, so once you pop on the multi-track, you'll have your individual waveform, your individual body track. But then we've got things like a Patreon commercial, a intro music, a little bit of a beat, an outro, and we've got to mix all those things together. So in your multi-track, you can then go in and add these things in and create a multi-track session. And then you mix all of this down into a single track. That's exactly what this is. This is the full track. So you can't hear it. Laugh. Then join our Patreon and support us. Get bonus content, a t-shirt, or an autographed copy of Rabbit. Dion and Chris, that's who I have. So you'll hear the voice and the podcast. intro. All that is mixed in post-production. So that is a digital audio workstation on the editing side. Now, what Kai might be talking about is how to record your podcast into multi-track because you can record this podcast is being mixed on my Rode Podcaster Pro. So when I just played that little audio clip, I am mixing on the board the microphone and the audio from the computer. So what if I wanted to record those tracks separately and then edit in the digital audio workstation later? then you've got to record in multi-track, which the Rode Podcaster Pro does. I also use Zoom H6. That is typically where I do most of my multi-track recording. The four or five microphones into the recorder, and it records their own individual tracks as opposed to one single mixed track, like I'm recording now. What are the benefits of that? So if you record in multi-track, you can then manipulate. Let's say somebody's really talking like this and another person is talking like this. Then it makes it a little bit easier when you record in multi-track to make it sound all mixed together so it's all even and I sound like this and then I sound like this and then I sound like this and then I sound like this instead of all these varying different types of sounds. So that's one of the benefits of recording in multi-track. With the Rode Podcaster Pro, I do all my in-studio recording into one single file because I have pots and gain that I can control the levels of audio and it has compressors and all kinds of different audio processors and I don't have to fool with the multi-track recording. It's a little more difficult to edit in multi-track. It's a little more difficult to record in multi-track. It's a little more difficult to manipulate, which means you need a little bit of a better digital audio workstation. Um, 
on the recording front, one other tip that I would say, I never record to a computer hard drive. Okay, now the Rode Podcaster Pro, the Zoom H6, those are technically computer hard drives, right? But they're doing one process. My Rode Podcaster Pro is recording to the hard drive, to an SD card, and it's doing one single process. It's recording. I'm also recording into StreamYard right here on this, and that is doing many different processes. I have one, two, three, four, five email tabs open, a messenger tab, my StreamYard tab where it's recording the video and audio. I have another tab open. So there's many different processes going on my computer. So I don't like to use my computer to record. Why? Because I've lost a lot of recordings that way because the computer crashes. If you have a subpar computer, then you don't really want to use a digital audio workstation to do your recording. It may be good as a backup, but it probably shouldn't be your main recording. In conclusion, find a digital audio recorder to do your recording and use your computer as backup when you're recording. If you want to use multi-track, it's especially important that you use something like the Rode Podcaster Pro or Zoom H6 to do your multi-track recording because you're using more processing power and these are built to do that recording. When it comes to editing in multi-track, you can do that in, Ad in Audacity, which is a free program, but it is a little more complicated than maybe paying the $20 a month for Adobe Audition, which is what I've always edited in and I prefer. Some people prefer GarageBand, Hindenburg. There's many different audio, digital audio workstations out there, Pro Tools, which is something that other people use, but it's very expensive. I find that Adobe Audition has a ton of tutorials. It's the simplest and most intuitive to use, and I've been using it since 2002. So that's why I stick with it. That's why I recommend it. But again, it's personal preference. If you've already got a Mac and you've got GarageBand, then why pay the money? Figure out how to edit a podcast and multi-track on GarageBand. It's fairly easy or figure out Audacity and edit that way. So these are my recommendations for a digital audio workstation, and I wish you the best of luck. Just try not to lose those recordings if you're recording to your laptop. You're not doing anything wrong, and if you are recording to your laptop, you probably already know that sometimes they crash. So be careful. It is way more reliable than it was 15 years ago for sure, but about 15 years ago, I switched to recording to recorders exclusively. And yeah, things like StreamYard and Zoom, they don't record in multi-track. So you've got to have something a little bit different. You're getting what I would call mixed audio. So I hope that helps. If you are interested in getting coaching from me, then you can go to leadersandlegends.net, sign up for a free coaching call, go to podcastingandplatforms.com, sign up for our email, get the toolbox, find out all the different recorders that I've discussed in this posted there where you can get a link to purchase. Full disclosure, I get a little bit of revenue back, so it always helps the program when you buy from the toolbox because we get a, a, re, a, a an incentive, a rebate. I don't know what you get from Amazon, but that sometimes they send me $20, <laughs> and that really does help the program, so thank you so much. All right, and thank you for listening to Podcasting and Platforms with your host, Chris Spangle.